If you are given a kitchen and asked to design the ventilation system, how do you determine the exhaust flow rate, fresh air and static pressure? The most important part is the exhaust flow rate. There are two methods to calculate kitchen exhaust airflow. The common method is how much airflow for every length of the kitchen hood, either in CFM per foot or liter per second per meter. The other method uses formula to calculate the heat generated by each cooking equipment to determine the exhaust requirement. For this video, we will be using the first method. For the second method, I have an article on my website. If you are interested, follow the link in the description below. To calculate the required exhaust flow rate, we need to know the kitchen hood length. This is usually provided by the kitchen specialist. But if we don't have it, we can estimate it by adding one foot to all sides of the kitchen block. This one foot is known as overhang, meaning the kitchen hood extends one foot out of the cooking equipment. By doing so, our kitchen hood length is 11 feet. Next, we need to categorize our cooking equipment. If you are designing for bakery or coffee house that only do simple cooking, then your cooking equipment is light duty. Whereas for a restaurant like wood fire pizza or charcoal steak house, the cooking equipment falls under the extra heavy duty category. Assume we are designing for a Chinese restaurant, our kitchen falls under the heavy duty category. We also need to know what type of hood is used. Again, this should come from a kitchen specialist. Based on our kitchen layout, we are likely using the double island canopy hood. With all that, we can refer to this table to calculate our exhaust flow rate. Our cooking equipment is heavy duty, the hood type is double island canopy, so the exhaust flow rate should be 250 to 400 CFM per foot. The length of our hood is 11 feet, so the exhaust requirement is 2750 to 4400 CFM. However, this is for one side. Double island canopy hoods have two sides. If we plan to use one exhaust fan for the entire hood, we need to double the flow rate. So, the minimum and maximum flow becomes 5,500 and 8,800 CFM. We can specify something on the upper end like 8,500 CFM for our exhaust fan to be safe. Once we have the exhaust flow rate, we need to design the duct and calculate the static pressure for fan selection. For simplicity, assume the static loss for the kitchen hood is 0.5 inch water gauge. The loss for the straight duct is 0.04 inch water gauge and the rest of the fittings are 0.1 inch water gauge. In total, the static loss came out to 1.04 inch water gauge. We can specify the static pressure of our exhaust fan at 1.1 inch water gauge to ensure proper system performance. The velocity should be designed at 1005 to 1008 feet per minute for effective grease removal. Instead of estimation, if you want to learn how to properly calculate duct static pressure, you can watch my earlier video Link in the description below. After completing the exhaust design, we need to calculate how much fresh air is needed to balance the pressure in the kitchen. Typically, 80 to 90% of the exhaust is good enough to maintain a slight negative pressure. 90% of 8,500 CFM is 7,650 CFM, and that will be our fresh air flow rate. Now, the exhaust is more than the fresh air, so the balanced airflow will be coming from the adjacent room, typically the dining area. However, we also need to ensure that the dining area has enough airflow for the kitchen. If the kitchen is pulling 850 CFM from the dining area, the air conditioning system in the dining area should provide 1000 CFM of fresh air so that the dining area has a slight positive pressure. In air conditioning, positive pressure can prevent unwanted infiltration. How we introduce the fresh air inside the kitchen is very important. There are a few methods. Here, we use the perimeter method where the fresh air is not connected to the kitchen hood but supplied via low velocity grills around the hood. Any supply diffuser in the kitchen, whether it is for air conditioning or fresh air supply, must be designed with low throw or low velocity or located far away from the hood. High velocity airflow near the hood can greatly affect the exhaust performance. This problem is often overlooked. If you are not sure about diffuser design, I have provided a few resources linked in the description below. This is the final design of our example. The exhaust is 8500 CFM and the fresh air supply is 7650 CFM with the balanced airflow pulling from the dining area. This creates a slight negative pressure which helps contain the cooking smell within the kitchen. One last thing to note 
is the exhaust and fresh air intake should be at least 16 feet or 5 meters apart to prevent the exhaust air from recirculating back to the kitchen. If you find this video helpful, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to learn more about heating, ventilation and air conditioning. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.